Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. As you can see here on screen, as of yesterday, I've officially given over a thousand individual consultation calls in this past year and a half. Now we're gonna jump into all the juicy details here in just a second, but just for clarity's sake, none of these were sales calls whatsoever. There was no official upsell. Just to give you some context, I actually have another YouTube channel that's dedicated exclusively to helping online creators unlock massive and meaningful growth on TikTok. I started uploading to that channel in mid 2019 and was initially just detailing my own personal growth strategy for scaling TikTok accounts and turning a profit on that influence, taking those followers to the bank, so to speak. And those videos were met with such positive reception, people wanting to seek me out on a higher level and hear my thoughts in brainstorming ideas with them and helping them overcome whatever creative obstacles they were dealing with in their own respective TikTok journeys. And so I actually started offering free calls initially and what I told myself, my thought process was, all right, let me just get a general grasp on what are some of the common issues creators are dealing with, then I can put together a actionable plan that I can actually charge for and give people over consultations. But I got to the point where every single week was booked with dozens of calls, people willing to pay me $100 per half hour call. And these were creators that were ranging from those just starting out to top tier musicians with millions of followers on Instagram. And you know, over the course of this past year and a half, it's been a very, very fun experience. You know, I, I do have to say, uh, helping creators understand where they're at, where they're trying to get to, and how they can bridge the, that gap themselves and reduce any creative of bottlenecks along the way. And by the way, I should mention that this well, this information by no means ex is exclusive to just TikTok creators. I probably should clarify that around 15 to 20% of all these calls were actually social media strategy sessions where we helped not just TikTok creators, but YouTube creators and, and other people that were looking to really, I guess, create a top of the funnel approach where they could get massive attention, millions of eyeballs on their content and brainstorm ideas and, and put together a strategy in, in many different contexts. So, you know, whether you're someone who's just started starting out, you're an online creator, you're a coach, you have a story, a message that you want to share with the world, I think you're going to get some good value from this video. So if you do appreciate this information, leave a like down below and let's get started. All right, so the first thing I want to touch upon is what's known as the creative taste gap. It sounds a bit like a cooking challenge to some extent, but what it actually is, it's a concept that's coined by American public radio host personality, Ira Glass. And this is something that's super helpful. It's a great pair of glasses to put on for anyone just starting out. I wish someone had told me this when I was just beginning uploading videos on YouTube. And at its most basic level, if you were looking to make videos on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, on any social medium, you're willing to put content, you're willing to create at its most basic level, you have good taste. You're able to recognize what good content is and there is something that you want to add and there's something that you want to share with the world. So for the first couple of weeks, you start out putting content and what you're outputting, you realize it's it's not top tier, it's mediocre, and it begins to fall short of your own expectations. You're able to recognize that because again, you likely got into the creative process because you have good taste. You're able to recognize what good content is. You can see your own shortcomings and recognize them as somewhat of a disappointment. I think one of the best ways to, to describe this or envision this idea is if you watch any video like a TED Talk online, right? There's thousands of those on YouTube. It's very easy to, as a viewer, a speculator on the audience, point at a certain speaker and say, oh, I like what she does. I don't like what he did. I probably could do better. Until you jump on stage yourself and you realize really what a challenge it is to captivate an audience. And this is a key crossroads right here where you recognize that you have a shortcoming even though you're able to recognize what good content or what a good presentation is. And truth be told, many creators give up at this point. In fact, many of the, out of the thousand creators that I connect with, many of them did. And so one of the principles that I've started to teach my consultation students is, and I'm sure someone else has come up with the same exact idea in some way, shape or form, but I've called it the 1% rule. And at its most basic level, the 1% rule states that for each creative endeavor, be it a video or if you're an artist and you're painting a canvas, besides obviously bringing your very best work that you can, the very best value that you can share with the world, your only other goal should be to level up your content each time by just 1%. What is the most minute thing that you can do to enhance and level up your content in some way? Maybe it's putting extra graphics in your videos for better understanding, making your information more digestible, or spending an extra 10 minutes on your script, enhancing your lighting or your environment in some way. The point here is 100 creative outputs down the line. If it's 100 videos, your work is gonna be 100% better than what you began with, and you're gonna be much, much closer to reflecting your good taste 
in your own content. Because at the end of the day, the only way to really bridge that gap is simply to put in the work. I mean, honestly, there's no really other way around it. And the same thing is true with my own content. This is the very first video I'm uploading to this YouTube channel, and that's why I feel it's very appropriate to start with this topic. I'm rest assured taking my own medicine. And I know I'm not gonna be thrilled with the end result of this video. The thumbnail is not gonna be perfect, but at the end of the day, I really am content with that. It's okay because I've been part of enough creative transformations to know that putting in the work really is the magic formula. One of the banes of our society nowadays on social media is that everyone's trying to hack and shortcut the process. What can I do to get 100,000 followers tomorrow or a million views on this video? Or worse yet, they spend weeks putting together the perfect video plan only to never really take action because they set their standards so high and are comparing you know, their very first upload, their day one with someone else's day 400, someone else who's already had their skin in the game for over a year. So I know I'm kind of going on here, but I want you to recognize that if you are in that situation where you're frustrated because you know you have potential, you have an idea that you know can impact a lot of people, and yet you look at your content, you find it disappointing, and you find it underperforming, my challenge to you is, well, besides remembering what got you into this in the first place, recognize that you just have to put in the time. And that's why there really, really is no shortcut for this stage of the journey. And that's why it's so important too, to not be in it just for the money. This is one of those stages of your journey where your passion really has to be the fuel that keeps the momentum going. The second thing I wanna to touch upon is the idea that your story is what truly does build trust at scale. You know, I've worked with a lot of creators who are trying to get their audience to take some kind of a call to action, whether they're cross-pollinating their followers to another social medium like YouTube, for example, from TikTok, or they're trying to build an email list, or they have an app and they wanna generate users, or they have a program and they want people to sign up to become a member. I can tell you those that have the highest conversion ratio or the highest sales ratio are those that share their story, that showcase the human behind the handle, as we like to say. They chronicle their journey and at its most basic level, we as humans, we find human journeys relatable. You're not some social media tycoon who does things that are so outside what the average person has access to. It's every single creator's dream, honestly, to have a cult-like following, a die-hard fan base of people who are willing to support you and who believe in your potential. And one of the best ways to start planting those seeds right now is to showcase your own journey and share your live real-time thoughts with what you're dealing with. What are the challenges that you're trying to overcome in your business and your creative endeavors? What's the next step? You're working towards a goal. What does that trajectory look like? And should, can people follow you along that journey? I'll be honest, it's very easy in this 21st century to only talk about the highlights. It's one of the curses of social media, if you will, the fact that people feel that they have to fit that mold of only showcasing the top 1% of what happens to them. And here's really the big kicker. I think this is one of the most important sentences in this entire video, the, the thesis for this section, if you will. If you can showcase just a little bit of vulnerability and people are able to identify what you were dealing with, what was one of your core conflicts, and fast forward later on down the road when you've hopefully overcame that issue, people will know for a fact that there was a solution that occurred between point A and point B, and they will be willing to seek you out on a higher and an often paid level because of that. And I mean this in multiple contexts. You can do this if, you're, if it's a business struggle in solution, or if it's something spiritual, or if it's something physical or mental, or it's, it's a creative challenge that you were able to overcome. And I can tell you, working with thousands of creators on TikTok and other social mediums, but more specifically for TikTok, the videos that have done the best, and, and mind you, we're talking about videos that are over 50 to 60 million views on the platform, are those that are based on transformations, that are based on telling a story or building a narrative and this is also true with musicians as well. Those musicians that I've worked with that have success in cross-pollinating their audiences to increase their Spotify plays or drive traffic to their latest debut Vivo music video are those that really go deep into the inspiration behind writing their latest album or single or really talk about the events and the experiences that led them to write this song in the first place. The third thing I wanna to touch upon is what I've coined the creator hallmark. This is another one of those big differences between those that amass a loyal fan base fairly quickly versus versus those that spin the wheel, tread the water without really seeing any traction. The creator hallmark is the idea that you should have something unique to you 
that the average person simply can't just go and replicate. If you don't know what really that is, it's the answer to the $65 million question, what makes you strange? Now, the most obvious thing that often comes to mind is, is your story, especially if you have a lot of unique experiences that no one else has, but it can also be something tangible, like a noticeable object, for example, or a personality quirk that you really make obvious, or a phrase, or even a location that no one else really has access to. Some would often call this your personal brand trademark, which you may have often heard it referred to as, but it really is so important in helping to separate you from what the masses are doing. And out of those thousand plus consultation calls, what I can tell you a lot of creators do is they set the unrealistic expectation of trying to become the next Mr. Beast or the next Zack King, the next Emilio family. And while I respect the ambition, don't get me wrong, trying to duplicate someone else's success in that matter really just adds you as another fish in the pond versus trying to become a shark in the water who's known for your own path and what makes you unique. And I know this sounds like a really vague and often you know, ambiguous idea, and that's because there really is no blanket standard that works for every single creator to help you figure out what that creator hallmark is. Taking it back to the creative taste gap that we talked about in point number one, a lot of it is just putting in the work and those ideas will make themselves known over time. You'll figure out what that creator hallmark is by just pulling the trigger and getting started. A prime example is Graham Stefan on YouTube, who's really built this inside joke with his audience, this community mantra of smashing the like button. He's got a neon sign in his place that is re you know, representative of that entire idea. But that's something that's really become a trademark of his personality and something that really wasn't a big factor with his content when he started three years ago. So again, this creator hallmark is there to create a sense of familiarity in your content. People can recognize you because of that. You stand out. Just to give you an example of something I've done in my own content, one of the creator hallmarks for my TikTok YouTube channel is the phrase, let's talk TikTok. There's a lot of inside jokes in our community with that. It's something that often appears in my videos. I also use a very specific kind of font that I found online that I hadn't seen anywhere else. I thought was very unique. I use a very consistent spectrum of colors in my videos as well. Another quick example is actually a client of mine, a real estate coach, and we created a series with her. It was a video series on TikTok titled, Let's Get Real. It was supposed to be a play on the word realtor, and it was going to showcase the non-flashy, often monotonous things that she does, the behind the scenes tasks that people find boring as, and as a real estate agent. And it took off, it did very well because it was something different that people really hadn't seen before. And we branded it in a very unique way. So the point here is figure out what your creator hallmark is or work toward that discovery process and let that be the signature of your content. Fourth and final thing I wanna to touch upon is the idea that comparison is self-condemning. Now, to tell you not to compare yourself to others, I know it sounds cliche, it sounds easy in principle, but the truth is, we do it all the time. I'm guilty of it. I haven't completely mastered this aspect of the creative process. And this ties in a little bit to what we just talked about with the creator hallmark, because giving yourself the same expectations as someone else almost does a strong disservice to you, because you're telling yourself that there is a single mold that you have to fit. And the irony of all of this is we are always gonna lose this comparison battle because we always compare up. We are always comparing our quality, our ideals, our talents with someone else who's always doing better than us. We never compare down. So we're always gonna kinda inherently lose that battle. And I do wanna stress too that there's a difference between inspiration and comparison. It's okay to view content, admire what someone else is doing, and perhaps take something away that can help you in your own creative endeavors, but to expect you to fit that exact mold and be at that same stage, isn't a very healthy practice. And out of those thousand plus creators that I've had the pleasure of connecting with, those that have gone on to do great things, adding five, 10 million followers on TikTok, and I, I do mean million, I mean the platform is growth on steroids, and those on YouTube that add hundreds of thousands of subscribers are those that really channel the time that we would normally spend consuming content into making content. There's that shift that needs to happen where you almost just put on your horse blinders and you focus on the track ahead. And who you should be comparing yourself to is yourself. Asking questions like, are you working as hard as you can? Are you learning to level up your editing capabilities or your coding capabilities, your script writing capabilities? You know, that one of the concepts we teach is known as the, uh, it's a very corny title, but the power half hour, where all you do is you make sure that you block in just 30 minutes a day where it's focused on leveling up your current skill set, whatever that may be. One of the other structures that we also teach as a practical solution is what we call selective consumption, where for the purpose of maximizing your productivity and also for the sake of mental health, you limit the sources of where you consume content to just two or three sources. Two or three YouTube channels is all you're gonna check in with. 
Or even better yet, you cap that time at something like 30 minutes or 20 minutes a day. So I think I wanna end the video there. I don't wanna go off for, for too much longer. If you enjoyed this video, you found value from these four lessons that I've learned throughout having a thousand plus consultation calls, please leave a like on this video. Consider subscribing to this channel. And if you wanna work with me personally in any capacity, I'm gonna leave a link in some resources below this video. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to follow me over on Instagram. Thanks for checking in here and we'll catch you next time.